So, um, okay, so let's start. So what we said we're going to talk about first is just unpacking the word itself and the meaning of the word value. What do we mean when we say something is valuable? To put it, to, to answer it simply, actually, because, mm. I mean, I've been doing uh, quite a few of these conversations, you know, since lockdown started, yes, and everybody yes. keeps talking about value, you know? Even when you <laughs> see some of our faves there on YouTube, they say, oh, no, yeah. um, I don't talk, I don't give clients a price, I just tell them about value, and then they buy yeah. it, and it sounds so amazing, it's just like, oh, value, value. And honestly, <laughs> if we're going to talk about value in its simplest form, it is what you mean to somebody else. That's value. If sure. we're going to be very simple, it is what you mean to somebody else. And so if you mm. mean a lot to somebody, you have a lot of value to them. If you don't mean mm. a lot to them or what you have to offer doesn't mean a lot to them, you don't have a lot of value to them, right? Mm -hmm. And value and need are always you know, they, they seem, it seems like they should be the same thing. You know, like if you need me, then I should be valuable to you. But they mm. never like that, you know, because mm. people have a lot of options out there. So while they may have a need for food, they don't have to eat INJ. They can eat any other brand that they want to eat. Mm. And so when you talk about business now, we have to understand that just because you're showing people what you can do as a product and that they need you, it doesn't mean that mm. you're valuable to them. And that's the conversation mm. that people talk about when they say you have to talk about having value. It's about mm. saying, how do I make your life better? Why, why should you choose me? How, why do you need me? What, what's bigger than, than just your need? How do I fulfill your life? Mm. That's the value that you add to something. And so mm. I think when you think about value, it's, it's more than just needs or functionality. Like what can I do? It's literally about the, the more intrinsic thing, you know, it's, um, if you eat IMJ, yes, you need food, but you eat IMJ because you will have the best food experience you've ever had in your life. That's the mm. value. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Right. Uh, like, businesses and people don't know how to communicate value. And sometimes we think that just because we communicate value, somebody will see it. It's not always the case because for some people, value is, has, is, is a very small item in their decision-making process. So for them, mm. it's, yes, we do need food, but we've got a limited budget. And so we don't actually care how much value you add to us. You know, your value yeah. has to fit our budget. If it doesn't, sorry, we're not going to work with you. Even though we know you're great, we're just not going to do it. Yeah. And yeah. so price and then what you can do versus the value you add are all very different things. And they're not always together. Sometimes they're mutually exclusive. It just depends on the situation. Yeah. yeah, I like something that you said that sometimes we don't know how to communicate our value. And I think this goes both from like a personal perspective and a business perspective. And it had me wondering um, if we can truly tie value to something worth, if that makes sense. Like if you look at a monetary value of 100 rand, yeah. um, its worth is obviously dependent on what's happening in the economy at that time. Sometimes you can do a little bit more with it and sometimes you don't. But how do we begin to package value? And I think let's start from a business perspective. How do we begin to package value to be able to communicate it a bit more better? So when you talk about value, right, you have to understand that it has to be spoken about from a perspective. So I like that you said from a business perspective, because if we had to talk about value from a customer perspective, that's a completely different conversation about what that hundred grand would mean, you know, because when you think about customers, yes, let's say each customer has a hundred grand to spend, right? People mm. don't just spend on the things that they need. They spend on the things that they want. And a lot of the time people find ways to justify their wants as needs. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And, and I think one of the best things I can use to explain that is uh, recently Michali was trending on Twitter about how she dates all the men, blah, 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 blah. And you'll find that in those situations, right, you get those girls, if they get an allowance from home, they'd rather spend that money on makeup and clothes that they can wait to go meet these rich men than on their textbooks. They'll find another way to get money for textbooks. But if they were left with a hundred rand, they'd spend it on the thing that allows them to meet those men and fulfill whatever they have to do with them, then actually pay for school fees or pay for a textbook. And so yeah. when you think about what the value of money is in the customer's hands, it's based on their wants more than they need. And if your company communicates well enough, you can turn a person's wants into a need for them. 
So you can convince them whilst they're sitting with themselves and having that internal conversation of, you know, I know I shouldn't buy, I don't know, chocolate, but I really, really want it. And then they think about it and think about it and it becomes a need. And then you go, yes, you're right. It is a need. And we can fulfill full, full that need. It's no longer a want, it's a need now. And so mm. businesses really need to know when to start talking to customers and how to speak to customers so that they, they can allow customers or be part of that process of turning wants into needs, you know? Because people will spend mm. their money on what they value. That's the, at the end of the day, that's it. So you yeah. must find a way to put yourself or position yourself in a way where you say, you need me because you want me. Does that mm. make sense? You're completely right. that wanting to a need right. and a need to a want mm. and it starts to become confusing and becomes one thing and the person goes actually yes i think you're right you know <laughs> and i know uh, some yeah. people say well i mean how do you make this happen it sounds so it just sounds so intangible like what is it mm. really and it's in small things like for example let me use my podcast as an example right okay. i don't say listen to this to change your life because it's like, mm. okay, so what? You know, people, why should they listen to my podcast? But I would say something like, um, I know during COVID you're struggling to get more sales. And mm -hmm. on my podcast, we can have a conversation about how to do get more sales whilst you're at home with the kids running around. I know this is a terrible example because I'm so bad at making examples whilst I'm sitting. <laughs> but the point is I'm placing myself in their lives. And I'm saying, mm. I understand how you live. I understand what matters to you. And I'm plugging myself in that chain of what matters to you. I'm not saying mm. you have to do this because it's going to save you. People don't think that way. You have to show yeah. them that I understand the life that you live. I understand how you think. I know who you are. And so mm. I'm just a part of that process of you being you. It's, it's mm. I'm not just selling you a product to tell me to listen to something yeah. because I need viewers or listeners. It's not like yeah. that. It's about communicating that extra thing. How am I a part of your life? What do I do for you that you can't do for yourself that you need? That's value. Sure, Clems, that's such a mouthful. It is. <laughs> such actually, a like, like, yeah, like it's just so <laughs> happy to from everything that you've just said. And there's something I just also wanted to kind of get into because it just reminded me of an incident in my own personal life. And this happens quite a lot where um, you've seen businesses and people try to convince other people of their value. So trying to, mm -hmm. I am valuable and I am worth this much. And I think we can always tie that to like relationships and like all sorts of things that we've always kind of entered into and our yeah. value is recognized. And because of that, we tried to enforce or rather communicate aggressively the fact that we are valuable. How do businesses slash people kind of move away from that in terms of sometimes when you feel like your value is not being received the way that you had imagined it? What's mm -hmm. the, what's the, step forward to kind of communicate that a lot more better so when you speak value you have to first of all think that you are valuable yourself right and the more you believe that you are valuable as a business or as a human being the easier it becomes for you to be able to communicate your value to other people and so i've actually got a great example um I have a LinkedIn profile and people always DM me on LinkedIn and say, Lebu, uh, we'd love to work with you. Here's our number. Please call us or whatever, whatever, you know. So the mm. other day, a guy DM me on, on LinkedIn and he said, I really love your profile. I'd love to have a call with you because I think you could work with me on this event. And I was like, okay, cool. And we had a phone call and he kept asking me questions. He asked me, what is your business like? What do you guys do? Who's your ideal clientele? And he didn't like any of my answers. And I was not willing to change my answers because I said to him, and he's a 40 year old man, I'm 29. So there is that age gap and that perspective gap. We yeah. see business, we see yeah. marketing, he's a marketer, but he didn't understand why I was choosing to say things the way that I chose to say them. And mm -hmm. I wasn't willing to budge to say them in the way that he wanted to hear them because it was going to dilute what sure. I believe I do as my business and my value that I have mm -hmm. to offer to the market. Yeah. And so I could tell very quickly from that interaction that actually, you know what, this is not going to be a conversation where I get to show my value the way I want to. He's not mm. ready to hear it this way. He wants to hear it a certain way. And I'm not willing to, to speak that way. And I know my mm. value enough to know that this is a client or a prospective client I can, I can let go of. Because even though mm. he's a cool person, he's got a lot of opportunities, 
my value, yeah. the way I want to exist in the market doesn't align with the way he wants to see things, you know? And oh, wow. a lot of people think that when you communicate your value to other people, you must change who you are. And it's actually the complete opposite. When you communicate your value to other people, you must show more of who you are. Show yeah. them why you are more unique than somebody else they could replace you with. And show them why you're not replaceable. Because <laughs> that's the whole point of that, you know? Yes, I'm hungry and yeah. I need food. But actually, a person must be going, I can only eat this product. That's what you're trying mm. to do when you're telling people about your value. And the more you are yourself in communicating your value, whether you're a business or a human being, the more people go, actually, I can't replace this person. Because now, when they compare you to another company, they're going to use the characteristics that you, only you have. You know? It's not just about, mm. oh, she's a marketer. They'll say, oh, but she loves to talk about this, and she's so passionate. And she loves to do this, and then they try to find somebody else who does it like that. But actually, they can't. Yeah. Because there's only one you. So the more yeah. you communicate your value to people is the more you should be more of yourself than uh, when mm. you're just uh, presenting yourself in the beginning in a sales process. And if you can mm. see that with you being more of yourself, that there's actually too much friction and the person isn't getting it, then I'd say move away. It's a great sign of showing you that mm, this yeah. is not where you're going to be able to exist and actually mm. add value. And so mm. for me personally, the more I have known my value, the easier it is for me to say yes to work, no to work, to be patient when things don't happen my way, to understand mm. when somebody's not understanding me because I'm communicating badly or they're not understanding me because they're not my market. You know what I mean? And mm. I think once you understand your value, you'll be able to to see all of those things. You'll be able to see them very nicely. It's very clear. And so I think a lot of people are just struggling with the fact that they don't know their value to begin with. And so that's why they feel like, oh my gosh, nobody understands me. Oh, I've done this kind of marketing, but nobody's understanding our comms. No, do you understand your value before you ask other people to understand it? <laughs> You know, yeah. that's the question that you should be asking. I love that because I, I, I'm just remembering from what you're saying that I've had a lot of sales jobs and I mean, I've sold a lot of things in my sales career. And the majority of the time, I've made the greatest sales in products that I really, and stuff that I really believed in and stuff that I really liked. Mm -hmm. So, and stuff that I was just like, whatever about, like if I had to sell like fitness, aquaponic stuff, it's just like, whatever, man, I don't know this and I don't get it. And I wasn't able to sell it the way that a person who loves it would be able to buy it because I don't represent the product properly. And I like what you also said about understanding the value within you first and within your business first before you kind of get out and start trying to sell that value out to everyone because that's what we do a lot. And I think, do you think that it's got a lot to do with um, our microwave generation? So like, for instance, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll talk about digital entrepreneurs, for instance, right? If you feel like you've got this thing that you want to do, you've got this idea. And I mean, I, I struggled with this years ago where every time I have an idea, I want to execute because it's like, there's value and I need to execute right now. The people are waiting, but... Do you, do you think that sometimes we need to sit down and stay on the drawing board long enough while we understand the value of what we are trying to unpack or what we are trying to impact people with? No. So I think that you find value in action. You know, if you're sitting and thinking about something, you can only think about its value based on the idea that it is. But once you execute it and you actually understand its true form in the market, then you'll actually be able to see the kind of value that it truly has once it is live and it is uh, impacting people's lives. You know what I mean? So you can't like guess the value of your business. It's the same as the whole target market versus customer. I always have this conversation with people. Your target market is the market that you want to have. When you create your business plan, you're like, oh, this is the target market. I think my product is for these people. Then your customer right. are the people who are actually using your product, who actually mm -hmm. want what you have to sell. And a lot of the time, people find that their target market is not the same as their customers. And mm -hmm. so if you have your business and it's running, you're able to see that quicker and then fix it. And then amend your business plan to change the target market to your actual customers. And then you can change how you see your business and how you run your business. And it's the same with uh, value. You can't actually see what kind of value you offer the market until mm -hmm. you are in the market. So before mm -hmm. I had this label lion uh, persona, I consulted mm -hmm. on my own. Since I was in varsity, I would consult for people uh, who I'd meet and I'd say, I really like your business. Please let me consult for you for this amount. And they'd be like, cool, let me come through, right? And mm. at the time, 
I knew I was good at marketing, but I didn't understand what made me different to other marketers. And a lot of the time I'd feel like, oh my gosh, I need to learn more. I need to read more. I need to study more because there's this guy and then there's Sylvester and all these people and they look like they're doing amazing things. I can't do that, you know? Mm-hmm. And then when I actually just blocked the noise and actually did the work, I realized, no, mm-hmm. actually, this is what I'm good at. This is what I do. This is the value I offer. And my value doesn't compete with theirs because I actually know what I'm about. So mm-hmm. when you don't know what you're about, your value will always feel like it's competing with other people's. Like your value is replaceable or substitutable, mm-hmm. but it's not because there's only one you. So yeah. it's very important I to love, that you actually will find you. Uh, I love what you said about knowing that you're good at what you do, but you don't know what sets you apart from other people. Yeah. That is important. Take me through take me through that, just differentiating yourself from other people and that identity process. Yes, that's a, that's a hard one. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, so every time I speak to people, especially prospective clients, and they ask me questions about my business, they always mm. say to me that the things I say sound a bit dreamy. Like, okay, but we need hardcore facts. Like you must say, the three-step guide to discover, you know what I mean? And I'm not that kind of person. Like, it's really yeah. not my vibe. And I just feel like if you're a millennial, you're younger, we really learn yeah. to express ourselves creatively. Even when the way we do business, whether you have an accounting firm or a law firm or, or, or an advertising agency, the way we express ourselves is very creatively. And we're very good at communicating because we've been on social media for so long. And so when you tell people steps, it's not enough. You actually have to show them how things fit into their lives, you know? And for me, I think the process of identity is the same as the process of value. It is, you need to just choose something. You have to say, I want to be a chef. And you must just put yourself in full in 100% and try to be a chef. And if it doesn't work for you, you'll realize I'm not meant to be a chef. And if it kind of works for you, but then you're like, Ish, I don't actually like delivering door to door. I'd rather write a cookbook and have a show on television. All of these things reveal themselves to you. But if you're just sitting with yourself and writing down plans all the time and saying, I think I'm good at this. I'm going to do this. It's just a, it's just an idea guys and ideas Mm. are ubiquitous ideas are everywhere because so many ideas are not implemented and so they're not they're not real things and if something isn't real you don't actually know its true power its true strength its true true use true anything so you need to we need to start thinking of of being the kinds of people who whenever we feel like something we just do it like night says if you feel like you want to do something do it try it first Mm. and then Mm. your identity your value all of those things reveal themselves value is identity to me the same as how people say what is a brand the brand's your identity your identity is your value because there's only one you so they all kind of like mm. one thing they tied in with each other so yeah. the way that you unearth those things your value your identity is through action you know a lot yeah. of people will dm me and say oh i want to start a youtube channel this is my idea and i'm worried that this and this won't happen and i'm like but like you're just these are, these are scenarios that you're creating in your head. They're all fictitious scenarios. You're not yeah. actually aware of what you know how to do until you get that YouTube channel started and then present the problems. Don't come up with problems yeah. that don't exist. You know, I think we, need, we really need to get away from being um, in the business mindset of creating business plans and then having the business. For a lot yeah. of business models that are, happy, that are being created now, for example, if you want to be an influencer, you want to sell online, you do not need a business plan to start the business. Just start the business. The business yeah. plan you'll create it once you find a need for the business plan. But a lot yeah. of people create business plans, right? So that would be like your vision, your planning. And then they try to, to create a shop, a storefront that's based on this business plan and it flops. Because yeah. the business plan is very unrealistic and how they need to exist in the space where they want to create value is very different to the business plan. And right. so if you are Just... always trying to make, oh, series talking, if you're always trying to make your actions mimic your plans, you will always be in a, in a state of um, discomfort and a state of friction mm. because they'll never mm. come together. They never, ever, ever come together. Yeah. Ever. yeah. So just do, just do it. Like Mike would say, I think yeah. action is the most important thing. Yeah, I, I actually like that. But I tweeted something on Twitter last night with some odd hour. And I was talking about how I'm, I've, been, I've always been such an executor, like a master executor, that while I've executed, after I've executed, I'm like, oh, what have I done? <laughs> because I just took action, not planning stuff and not doing stuff. And that has worked to my greatest advantage in most of the cases. Um, 
if you could just kindly let us into the conversation that birthed Lebu line, because I feel like there was Lebu and then there was the, the conversation, the season, and then Lebu line. I'd like to get into that middle part. Okay, um, so label line is like my alter ego, like Sasha Fierce with Beef for Beyonce, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think depending on your personality, some of us need those things. So my personality, when I'm not in front of a camera or in front of a crowd, I'm very quiet. Um, I'm very shy, actually, and I love my mm-hmm. own space. So I'm an introvert mm-hmm. through and through. I do not like situations where there's just a lot of people around me. I'm not that girl, you know? And I love to mm. think and I love to write things down. And I'm just that kind of person. So a lot of people in my family actually think I'm very antisocial and they're surprised that I talk in front of people. And then, and then I, you know, I'm actually not what I do because at home I'm completely different. I'm the quiet one. Uh, so when I thought about having a public brand, it was because... Mm. I wasn't enjoying the process of owning a business and I felt like something was lacking in the value conversation that I was having with my clients. And when I looked around me, I was like, every time I come and I say, I'm a marketer and I've got this marketing business, people will give me the names of people who are famous. And I'm like, okay, so people really think that marketing is something you do when you're famous. And to me, that never makes great sense because marketing is just a strategic work and you need brainy people. Marketers are nerds, most of us, you know, we're brainy, we think we are creative. We don't want to be in the forefront. We don't want to be in front of people. We just want to make the magic happen and make other people shine. And so as a young entrepreneur, I was really struggling with clients and them respecting me and respecting my price because they were like, but, oh, but Sylvester exists and all these other big companies, Ogilvy exists, why should we work with you? And so I was like, okay, since I'm not enjoying doing business this way anymore, let me stop and let me rethink my strategy. How can I do what I do and love it and show people that I love it without feeling angry about the backlash I might get from the market or from prospective clients or whatever? And so I realized that creating something that was my own, that a client couldn't take away from me, that I could introduce myself with would work for me, you know? And that's how the whole Lego Lion uh, name and persona came to life. It was just me giving an oomph to what I already know, but allowing my clients to see what I know before I approach them so that they mm. have more trust in me, they know, they know that I'm credible, they know some of the work that I've done, and they know my voice. Um, people mm. tend to work with people that they know. People tend to yeah. trust people that they know. So once you have a social media persona or a persona somewhere where they, where they exist, they start mm. to trust you. They go, oh, I see this girl every day. So she mm. must be somebody that I, I should listen to. And they listen to and they go, oh, I know who Label Line is. Now they start to trust you. Now they start to call you because they're like, oh, but we know Label Line. You're not a stranger anymore. And the yeah. problem is a lot of the time when we start businesses, especially when we're young, we're, we're mm. going into companies being strangers, right? And then mm. we're, we're sad and disappointed when they treat us like strangers. Even yeah. though we have these amazing business plans and we've got all these things that we can show them the amazing what mm. we've done, to them you're still yeah. a stranger. And business is between people. It's not between a person and a company. Even if it's B2B, those B2Bs are still people. So people Mm want to know and work with people they know. So that was kind of what I did. I pivoted my business by making myself the person that was known so that when I walk into boardrooms, they go, oh, we already know you're not a stranger. Now the conversation can actually be about the work and not about who I am. Because Mm. a lot of us have to spend so much time convincing companies about who we are that we lose out on the actual business because they'll almost oh, always go for the person they know, almost always. So Yeah, it's like John Max told me that uh, people buy people. People don't buy products and services, they buy people. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Nail it on the head. On the head. Nail mm-hmm. on the head. I always get that very <laughs> though. <laughs> So it was so me creating the alignments also was birthed from me working with a lot of small businesses. And I would talk to my clients and we'd just chat, you know, have a coffee and chat. They'd be like, Levu, you know, people should hear the things that you have to say because they're a bit different, they're crazy, they're a bit out there. And I think people would really like it. And I was always against it. I was like, no, guys, I don't want to be on social media. You know, my life is private. No, no, no. And then they were like, just do it, just try. And so I just did. And I literally did it and my whole business changed. The way that my business was when I started to compare to now is completely different. I own my time more than I ever have. I own my my supply chain. So even with the call that I had with that other guy, he was asking.
Sorry, hi, can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. I can hear you. Oh, when he was asking me about what is your ideal client, and I told him that I don't really have a specific ideal client. So for me, I don't go, I want to work with influencers in the beauty industry. My mm -hmm. answer was a bit more broad and a bit more idealistic, I guess, than what he wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, so I said to him, he said to me, but this is too idealistic. How do you make money? And I was like, I make enough money. I only take five clients every month. I'm mm. not in a rush. I'm not trying to be the girl who has a hundred clients every month. It's not my strategy. Yeah. And it works for my yeah. life and the plans that I have. So it just, it all makes sense to me now. And and before I was trying to do the other way around where I was like, I need to have this many clients to show people that I can do X, Y, Z. And I was like, uh-uh, my value is not there. My purpose is yeah. not there. And just existing on social media showed me that. And so life is a bit better. It's a bit more enjoyable than it was. Mm, I like that. You just reminded me of an incident I went through last year. It was actually quite um, heartbreaking because, you know, when you are growing a business and you really feel like you have really grown and then you get way more grown clients and you realize, do I either take them and put my big girl pants up or do I be honest with myself and feel like, you know what, this might not be the time and I'm okay with working the time out actually eventually years to come get that business. That was very insightful. So Lestova has a question and then I'm going to ask. Um, so Lestova, I just want to see, Lestova says, um, so Lebu, you, are your, you and your own business are one or have you, I'm paraphrasing because it keeps running away from me. Um, or have you been able to separate the two or do you still use your persona to get business? That's Lestova's question. So in my mind, me and my business are two different things. But because my personal brand that's out there in the public talks about mm -hmm. what I do, my business mm -hmm. and myself are one thing in the eyes of my customers. And that's why, so it's actually very tricky because a lot of people find this hard. I'll never say in my videos, if you want a consultation service, contact me at insert my company name. I never ever do that. But mm. I use my personal brand to get people to say, oh, Lebu, you say you're a marketing expert and we've seen in your videos that you actually know so much about marketing. Is there a way we can work with you? When they mm. ask me that, is there a way we can work with you question, then I send them my company profile. I'm like, okay, yes, I have this business and this is what we do for you, X, Y, Z. Mm. So it mm. wasn't, it's, it's not as overt as a lot of people who have like CEO in the <laughs> managing <laughs> director <laughs> yeah it, you know I'm, i i don't identify as a ceo of anything to be quite honest i yeah. identify as the voice of marketing because my podcast is about marketing and that's, okay. what, I, and that's what i love so if you're going to come to me some people don't even know what they want from me they're just like i want to work with you so tell me what you have mm. and then mm. i'll work with you so it's just mm. when you talk about what you know or what let me put it this way whatever you talk about becomes what people come to you for yeah. So oh, if you want to get business for your business, you don't have to tell people that you have a company that does whatever you do, but you must start talking about that thing. Be the expert in the industry. If you're an mm -hmm. interior decorator, talk about it <laughs> so that people can... Mm -hmm. Actually, every time I've had an interior design question, um, mm -hmm. I go to this girl's page and she answers my question. So maybe there's another way that I can work with her. Whatever you mm -hmm. talk about becomes what you become the expert about. 